welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a wonderful, simple knitted stitch pattern that you can then use to turn a beautiful one skein ball of yarn into a scarf or a cowl. I'm talking about the rib and lace scarf cowl. This is what it is right here. And it uses one ball of Red Hearts Colorscape yarn. Yes, just one ball. Like seriously, I only had this much yarn left <laughs> of the one ball to make this really great rib and lace scarf cowl. If I undo the buttons right here, which are just placed onto the edging of the piece, and then the buttonholes are actually the lace portion of the scarf, so you don't have to make extra buttonholes. You can see, here's the wonderful buttons. The buttonholes are just the simple lace stitch pattern that we use in between areas of ribbing. This is a very simple pattern. It is a fun introduction to the lace stitch. And if you have done ribbing before, you're just adding one little extra element to this pattern. It's only a two row repeat. So once you get going past the first two rows, you're just gonna keep repeating them all the way to the very end until you bind off. This is a free pattern available at marleybird.com. I'll be sure to put a link to it in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, smash that like button, as my kids say, to let me know you enjoyed this video. Now, all I want you to do is grab a ball of yarn, a pair of size 10 needles. I'm using circulars, but you can absolutely use straights. Your pattern and join me back here and we'll get started on this very simple rib lace scarf cowl. <laughs> This is such an easy project and it's one that you can finish in an evening. Honestly, once you get going with the rhythm of the repeat, you'll have this done in no time. It makes a great knit along project, if you will. Okay, let's take a look. We are actually gonna cast on at this end. The end that I attached my buttons to is my cast on end. And that's because my bind off edge, I like how nice and clean that is with that bind off. So we will start with the cast on edge. Because most of the cast on edge is covered by buttons, you could use any cast on you wish. For this example, I really prefer the long tail cast on, so we're gonna use that one. The stitch multiple for this particular stitch pattern is eight stitches plus three. I used three stitch pattern repeats for my example. So I will go ahead and make sure I have enough tail to accommodate all of those stitches. We will start off with a slip knot that we will place directly onto our needle. Once you have the slip knot on your needle, go ahead and position your yarn for the long tail cast on. If you need detailed instructions for the long tail cast on, please go ahead and check out my video for that right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Once you have your positioning, go ahead and work the long tail cast on for the number of multiples you want to use for your particular scarf cowl. For mine, I did three multiples. So one way you can go through is count your multiples as you work along, meaning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's one multiple. So there's eight there. Now I can do eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's two multiples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's my three multiples. But remember, I also have to do three more stitches. So one, two, three. So my stitch multiple is eight plus three. Now that we have our stitches cast on, we're gonna work one row of knitting and then we jump into the stitch pattern. To work your one row of knitting, you will simply knit the stitches you cast on. Nothing fancy, nothing really anything big about it, just knit down the entire row. Now that we've knit our very first row, we will begin the row repeat. It's just two rows, remember. The pattern has us begin with a purl one, and then bring your yarn between your needles and knit one. And we will do that twice. So bring your yarn back between your needles, purl one, back between your needles, and knit one. 
Once you've done that twice, you now will yarn over. So your yarn is in back, bring it between your needles, over top your right hand needle and back to the back. I like to hold my thumb on top of that yarn over to hold it in place. Now we will work a decrease that's gonna get rid of two stitches. Don't worry, your stitch count is gonna stay the same because we are putting a yarn over on either side of this decrease. For this decrease, we slip one stitch as if to knit. Then the next two stitches, we knit them together. So you go into the second one and the first one and you will knit them together. Now take your left hand needle, grab that stitch that you slipped originally and have it jump up and over the stitch that's remaining from your knit two together. This here is an SK2P. Now we want to yarn over our again. Our yarn is in back, bring it between the needles, back over top of the right hand needle and hold it in place. And then we knit one. That is our stitch pattern repeat. So at this point in the pattern, you'll see that there is a star and it says to go back and repeat from star to the last three stitches. So that's what we'll do. So at star, that's where we have our purl one, knit one, we do that again, purl one, knit one, now we do our yarn over, our yarn is in back, bring it between the needles, over top the right hand needle. Now we want to do the SK2P, so you slip one as if to knit, knit these two together, pass that slip stitch that you did over top of the knit two together stitch, do another yarn over, okay, and then knit one. So that was our second stitch pattern repeat, and I cast on three stitch pattern repeats, so I know that I have one more. For this one, I'm gonna hold my yarn in my other hand, for those of you who are continental. We will purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, yarn over, slip one as if to knit, knit two stitches together, pass the slip stitch, over top of that, knit two together stitch, yarn over again, knit one. We're to the last three stitches, so we will purl one, knit one, and purl one. That is the end of row one. Turn your work and we begin row two. Turn my work and on row two, let's see here, I will go ahead and put my yarn over here for you guys again. We begin with a knit one, and then we go into, bring my yarn between my needles, do a purl one between my needles, and then a knit one between my needles, and now we purl five. So there's one, notice the yarn over right here. Okay, that's what it looks like. We're just gonna go in and we're gonna purl it. Two, three, four, and five. Bring your yarn between the needles. We'll knit one, purl one, and then knit one. And we're back to the purl five. Bring your yarn back to the back. I'm gonna switch hands again. And we're at knit one, purl one, knit one, purl five. So one, two, three, four, five, knit one, purl one, knit one. Now it's just a repeat of row one and two. Let's do that again. So I'm gonna hold my yarn in my other hand this time as we start. And as we go back to row one, we have a purl one, a knit one, a purl one, a knit one, correct? Yarn over, and then we do our decrease. So we slip one as if to knit, knit two stitches together, pass that slip stitch over. Don't forget the second yarn over, so it's the yarn over after your decrease and then you knit one. 
This is the end of a stitch pattern repeat. So if you wanted to add a stitch marker here, you absolutely could just to help you keep track that you have eight stitches between the stitch markers. And at the very end, you'll only have three stitches. So I'm gonna add a stitch marker so you can see how that works. All right, I'm just gonna grab this stitch marker. So I have eight stitches worked here. I will go ahead, just add my stitch marker and I will carry on with my repeat. So I purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, yarn over, slip one as if to knit, knit two together, pass that slip stitch over top, yarn over, and then knit one. So I should have eight stitches beyond the stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can grab another stitch marker and put it in place. So now I have two of my stitch pattern repeats separated. Let's work on this one now. And we have purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, yarn over, slip one as if to knit, knit two together, okay? Pass the slip stitch over, yarn over, and then knit one. I should have eight stitches beyond this stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I grab another stitch marker. Oh, that's a big one, I want a big one. I'm gonna grab that one. I add the stitch marker there. I'm left with my final three stitches. So I work my purl one, knit one, purl one. And what the stitch markers do is to make sure that if you happen to get off track between your stitch markers, you don't have to wait to the very end of your row to realize there's something wrong. The minute you see that you don't have eight stitches between your stitch markers, you know you probably either forgot to have a stitch jump over to complete the decrease, or maybe you forgot one of the yarn overs. So it's a great way for you to be able to keep track. So let's go ahead and turn our work and see how the stitch markers work on row two. The great way, <clears throat> one of the benefits of the way I wrote this pattern out is that with the stitch markers in place and we turn our work, row two still works out because the first three stitches are not the repeat. The first three stitches are standalone, which is what we did um, at the last three stitches on the previous row. So we have a knit one, purl one, knit one, slip our marker, and then we jump into our pattern. So our pattern is purl five, two, three, four, five, knit one, purl one, knit one, slip our marker. We're back to the start of our repeat. You'll see this is where the star is in your pattern. So it's purl one, two, three, four, and five, knit one, purl one, knit one. It's the end of our repeat, slip our marker. Let's go ahead and work our very last repeat. So we have purl five, one, two, three, sorry, four, five, and then knit one, purl one, knit one. At the end of the row, go ahead and turn your work. You'll notice I like to put my stitch markers always on the same side as I'm looking at, and you're ready to continue on. Now, what's really great is I've made this really simple scarf cowl, rib and lace scarf cowl, using three repeats because it uses just one ball of Red Hearts Colorscape yarn, and this yarn is a size four weight yarn, and it has 187 yards. Should your yarn that you're choosing to use have more yardage or maybe has less yardage and you decide you want your particular piece to be thinner or wider, you can always do a different cast on number for whatever you think um, you need in order to have the width you want. This particular piece here is just shy of seven and a half inches, seven and a half inches wide, just to give you a good idea of how wide this piece is using a pair of size 10 knitting needles. And I do wanna mention again, I am using circular needles because I find them really easy to work with and I use them um, primarily all the time. But should you wanna make this using straight needles, you absolutely could do that.
Now, at the end of this project, you would finish off on a right side row, meaning you would be ready to begin a right side row when you're ready to end, and that's when you will just bind off all of your stitches. So because I'm on a right side row right now, I wanna show you how you would bind off your stitches. We're not gonna do anything special. So if you have bound off stitches before, you are in luck, you already know how to do this part. We will knit two stitches, have the back stitch jump up and over the front stitch. Knit one stitch, have the back stitch jump up and over the front. Knit one stitch, have the back stitch jump up and over the front. You can see I'm getting a really nice um, finished look here and that's why I like that finished look edge to be the outside of my scarf cowl. That's why I didn't add buttons to this edge. I added them to the other edge. I think that the finishing of this edge with this bind off just looked really nice and clean. Okay, so that's all you would do. As you go along, when you come to your stitch markers, if you added stitch markers, you just simply let them fall off and continue on. Just continue on binding off all of the stitches. Now, the good news is, as you're working along, you'll realize that you're only gonna have two ends to weave in. Now, of course, that is different if you happen to come across a knot in your yarn or you decided to make yours bigger and add more yarn. But for the most part, for the majority of you, you're only gonna have two ends to weave in. How cool is that? Now, let's talk a little bit about buttons. Buttons can really make this piece pop. So do yourself a favor, go to your local uh, big box store, Joann's, Michael's, Walmart, AC Moore, Hobby Lobby, whatever it may be. Check out the button selection. Chances are there's gonna be a button there that really speaks to you. If you wanna get buttons that are a little bit more artisan, more retro, maybe a little bit more custom, check out Etsy or go to a local Stitches events. On the cowl here, what I've done is I have some decorative buttons here that I purchased at a Stitches event several years ago, knowing that eventually I would come to the perfect project for these buttons. And I feel like I've done that now. These particular buttons are coated polymer clay and they have a shank type application. Can you see the shank? So I literally just used the extra yarn that I used for the scarf cowl and sewed all of these little buttons onto the edge of the cowl. Make sure you sew them onto the right side so that way when it's buttoned up, it is the right side and the right side facing out. And as I mentioned, these little lace portions, the openings that we created with the yarn overs, they act as buttonholes. So you don't have to add buttonholes. I mean, seriously, how much easier can that get? It's, it's so super easy. And when I tell you that this only used one ball of yarn, I, as I mentioned before, I really did. Like this is the remaining amount of yarn that I have for this particular piece. I could have went longer, but I didn't want to um, accidentally like use too much or maybe one of your balls is a little bit shorter than what mine is. I don't, I don't know. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't use all of it, but it's pretty close to the whole ball of yarn, isn't it? Okay, now you know how to make the super simple ribbon lace scarf cowl. That's the best name I got. It really sums it all up in my opinion. If you make one of these, be sure to queue it up in your Ravelry projects or share with me on social media. Use hashtag MarleyBird and I'll be sure to come and smash your like button as I know you are smashing the like button of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll subscribe so that way you will be notified whenever I release a video for knitting, crochet, or general crafts. I'm Marley Bird, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.